Lena one, Dr. Michael Twyman, this is going to be the only time you ever see me wearing these things is for this talk. So we'll chat about that tonight. So, yeah, I'm firing up the day glasses, the evening glasses, and old school sunglasses. Um, if you want to know why you shouldn't be wearing these things, you got to read this book. So, maybe I'll wear them for a little bit, but I got to get these things off because uh, I can't uh, be a bad uh, influence for you guys. So, Tonight, we're going to be chatting about health and light. Um, you know, you frequently hear me talking about red light therapy. Tonight's going to be talking more about uh, why you probably shouldn't be wearing these things very often, if at all. Uh, so, we'll actually take them off for now. And so, these are some old school Oakleys. Super nice, but uh, they sit in the case. And literally, in the past three years, I've worn them one time because I got my eyes dilated for a retinal exam. And when I'm outside, uh, my pupils are about that big. And uh, it was pretty bright doing that, so I did throw them on for a little bit, but really didn't need them too much. So, so light, we evolved under it. Uh, natural light, full spectrum light. So putting on sunglasses that filter out all your UV, and those ones are mirrored gray, um, the wavelengths of light hitting your eye are not the same thing that Mother Nature intended. So your skin, is getting a different signal than your eyes. And that causes a mismatch of information. That's going to lead to inflammation, inflammation that's unchecked. And blood vessels are going to kind of get scratched up and damaged in the process. So I'm only throw on the uh, traditional day uh, blue blocking glasses for now, since I'm still sitting in front of a uh, blue light screen with this thumb here. So talk a little bit about this book. It's not a book review tonight, but uh, Health and Light. It's a book by uh, John Ott. Uh, this is an excellent uh, intro book. You can see it's not too thick, um, easily readable, uh, not uh, overly scientific. Uh, the gentleman was the time-lapse photographer for Walt Disney for quite a while. Uh, so, you know, when you've seen uh, anything which uh, looks like a plant that uh, opens up real slowly and moves around, uh, that's going to be his work. Uh, he was doing this like in the 40s and 50s, you know, taking a picture moving something and he realized that when he changed different filters on his cameras the plants would do different things and so he realized that well maybe if it's doing to plants maybe it did to animals so then he changed different uh, lights on different cells and the cells would move depending on what wavelength of light he was shining on them then he went really deep down the rabbit hole and you know figured out a lot of other interesting things um, but some of the big ones are that sunglasses uh or no bueno uh, not good for you. Uh, if you block your UV to your eye, there's a, he doesn't know this at this point, but there's a receptor in your eye called neuropsin that detects UVA sunlight. If you're blocking it with this, your eyes don't get that signal. Different hormones and neurotransmitters aren't getting made when that happens. Um, so, you know, the only time I would ever maybe say <laughs> okay is if you're, uh, um, <laughs> if you're driving and you're absolutely blinded by the sun and you can't drive safely, Fine, put them on for short term, you know, but then when you're outside and not driving, get the things off. The other thing is, you know, if you're on the water or you're skiing and the sun albedo effect is blasting you back in the face, fine, wear them when you're going down the mountain, but when you're going back up, take them off and let the natural light get through your eyes. Again, it's about the mismatch of information between what light enters your eyes and hits your skin. So, light that enters your eyes. Uh, one of the things that it will do, it will create this compound called POMC, P-O-M-C. Um, basically cleaves or breaks into multiple different peptides. One of them is beta endorphin. That's an opioid that makes you feel good. This is the reason you feel somewhat addicted to going into the sun, um, is that uh, substance. But it also makes alpha melano stimulating hormone. So essentially, if you want to get a tan, your eyes need to make that signal first, then your skin will fire up the melanin producing cells and you will develop a tan. So if you throw on sunglasses, go outside and your skin hasn't been uh, preconditioned, and you haven't done the solar catalyst or you know, built yourself up, you're going to French fry yourself more if you're wearing sunglasses. So another reason not to wear sunglasses all the time. Going anyway, back to the book, um, a couple interesting stories in there. You know, he does uh, talk about, uh, I think it was Albert Schweitzer's daughter uh, in the Congo. Uh, had brought uh, some sunglasses with her there. The people that she had met there had never seen sunglasses, so they gave the local sunglasses. And then when they came back to visit them, I don't remember what period of time later, uh, the people developed a bunch of interesting problems that they didn't have before. Probably a lot of uh, neurologic and psychiatric issues 
Um, so they had never blocked light into their eyes before and you know, instantly blocking it uh, messed them up. So, um, but yeah, I can't remember the exact uh, passage in that, but there's a lot of interesting information about different wavelengths of light getting beneath people's eyes. Particularly if you wear pink sunglasses, it increased the risk of certain malignancies uh, and also psychological disorders in this one uh, college uh, cohort where these three people wearing pink sunglasses. If they would wear neutral gray sunglasses, then it kind of limited all the different wavelengths of light equally. Um, and so it wasn't as bad as wearing uh, um, regular sunglasses, but uh, you definitely don't want to be wearing pink sunglasses if you read this book. Uh, two other interesting things in the book. One, there's the Well of the Sea restaurant. Uh, unfortunately, it's not open anymore, but uh, it was a restaurant in Chicago, uh, and apparently uh, it had all the black lights in the uh, overhead area, and everybody there was uh, very healthy, happy, um, and they couldn't figure out why compared to the other restaurants in town. And uh, John Ott had done some spectroscopes and measured the different wavelengths of light that were coming from the black lights and the intensity, and uh, realized that the UVA light was weren't hurting people, but it's probably actually making them uh, uh, happier and improving their immune system so they uh, didn't get sick as much as the other places. So um, I have it usually fired up uh, right in front of me, a UVA bulb if it's uh, daylight hours out. So the old school black lights are UVA. So I usually uh, try to make my place look like they're at the well of the sea. But the, uh, the other interesting thing that they had in this book um, is about hyperactive children. Uh, who are exposed to a lot of artificial light in these schools with the old school incandescent and fluorescent bulbs. Uh, those are not full spectrum wavelengths of light. Uh, he set up cameras in these two different classrooms. One had the old school lights and the kids were very hyperactive, disruptive, getting out their seats and uh, generally uh, misbehaving. And then the other room had uh, these more full spectrum lights or they had their windows open and cracked and the light wasn't getting filtered as much. The kids are much well behaved sitting in their desk, less hyperactivity. Uh, so the corollary to the, today is, you know, kids now uh, are getting stuck in front of their screens and devices and uh, French frying their eyes for eight hours a day with that artificial light, much more hyperactivity. Um, I actually saw, uh, I, I won't even name them today, but I got a, uh, an article today sent to me uh, from a company developing the first electronic prescription medication for kids for ADHD. So well, let me click on this and see what it's about. Somebody developed an app to help people with their ADHD. So I have no idea why they think this would be useful to have kids staring at a device trying to improve their ADHD. You know, the data is pretty clear that that's not the way to go. So if you're interested in, you know, pick up a copy of this, it's on Amazon. Um, again, pretty simple read. Um, excellent uh, intro to how light interacts with your cells. Uh, the the most fascinating thing about this, this book was written in 1973. Uh, this is, you know, yeah, prior to me being born. Um, and so this is not something that, uh, you know, is woo-woo or uh, just came out last week. Uh, this data has been around for a long time. Uh, so this is your good intro book. Uh, sometime I'll start talking about the more uh, advanced book. I frequently talk about it being the hardest book I've read since getting out of uh, medical school um, by Roland Van Wick. Talking about biophotons, how your cells actually uh, release wavelengths of light so that they can talk to other cells. Uh, it just blows your mind when you actually read this thing. Um, you know, someday hopefully they'll have biophoton scanners, you know, and it'd be like uh, almost like an MRI machine or something like that. You just walk into a room and how much light is coming off of you would determine how healthy or sick you are. Sicker people, they leak more light into their environment. Uh, healthier people hold on to their light. So, you know, I frequently talk about, you know, being outside of Mother Nature, that light is what you're supposed to be evolved into. Uh, that helps you hold on to your light. The more time you spend in front of these things that we're staring at right now, uh, the less likely you'll be able to hold on to your light. So I uh, so wanted to, uh, to share this information with you guys tonight. Uh, I'll probably switch over to my evening glasses once uh, it's not so sunny out. Um, you know, I'm pretty hypersensitive to wearing these things. I'd be unconscious in about 30 minutes of putting them on. So. I only put them on about an hour before bed, but these are pretty much on nonstop throughout the daytime. Anytime I'm inside, even if it's just you know behind glass, because glass filters out, you know, the majority of glass that you have in your home is gonna filter out all the UV light and a good portion of the red or infrared light. So it's mostly blue light, green light getting through. That's a mismatch of information hitting your eyes and skin. It tells your body it's a different time of day than it really is outside. So the trick is when you're inside or you're in your car, just crack the window a little bit. Doesn't have to be a lot. Lights, 
literally, you know, the speed of light. Reactions happen on your skin and in your eye instantaneous when those photons uh, interact with the electrons in those different cells. So avoid these things, wear these things, and drop me some questions. So that's uh, what I want to chat about tonight. Uh, next week, I'm going to go back to a cardiology topic. I recently got a new toy in the office. I got an ambulatory 24-hour blood pressure monitor. So blood pressure is more than uh, you just rushing into your doctor's office. Somebody slaps a cuff on you, and most of the time, they hit a machine and it gives you a number. Uh, that's a starting point, but more optimally, if you come into the office, you should be sitting down for a few minutes, relaxed, feet on the ground, back supported, arm at heart level, and then have a manual blood pressure cuff. Ideally, with a mercury column where you can actually uh, grade the systolic and diastolic blood pressure more accurately than if it's a air gauge. Um, so that's what we do in our office at Apollo Cardiology. Um, but we're going to be adding the 24-hour blood pressure monitor, which lets you go home wearing this monitor, similar to the Holter monitor. Uh, so instead of measuring your heart rhythm, we're measuring your blood pressure over a 24-hour period. Your blood pressure should drop as you sleep. You should be dipping your blood pressure at nighttime. That means you're balancing your melatonin cortisol levels effectively. If you have a high blood pressure at night or rising blood pressure at night, it means you have very low melatonin. How do you make melatonin? You go outside in the sunlight, let it hit your eye, tryptophan through all these serotonin, through all these processes, ultimately it makes melatonin. Your body releases it when it's darkness. So you can see in your blood pressure if you've been uh, getting your light environment right. Um, so we'll be launching that this week at the practice. So I'll be talking more about that next week, Monday, six o'clock. Yes, I do know it's uh, July 5th. Uh, so enjoy the 4th of July weekend for those that celebrate it. Um, and I'll see you back next Monday at 6 p.m. Central Time. So yeah, so somebody said, good information. Sure, thank you. Can't wait until we advance using light therapies. Uh, that's the plan. Um, so Apollo Cardiology, sure, why don't we do some, you know, we'll break it for the people watching tonight. So Apollo Cardiology is gonna be two years old this summer. Um, and the big news coming soon is that uh, Apollo Cardiology is upgrading. So um, gonna be bigger space, uh, gonna help people really get to the fine uh, kind of root cause of their cardiovascular issues, which we always have been doing. But we're gonna go a little bit more mitochondrial based to quantum based. Um, so kind of a device that should be able to you know, look at essentially how efficient mitochondria are at or extracting oxygen from the environment, uh, but also we're going to have a photomodulation lab or red light lab, infrared lab, to be able to treat people's you know, weak mitochondria. So I will teach you how to use the devices appropriately. So let's see, I got the uh, Weber watch, got the Weber helmet, uh, have a couple of different EMR tech panels, um, have a, a mattress uh, that you can lay on with a pillow, not super strong, but eventually in the future we'd like to upgrade to a full on red light kind of tanning bed type of thing. Um, and then uh, really will uh, kind of <laughs> have a lot of fun with people. So, uh, so if you're interested in uh, kind of a virtual visit, uh, just drop me a message and I can get you more details how to do best work with us. You know, we do work with patients who aren't in the St. Louis area. Um, so depending on what you, you know, need, you know, we'll uh, definitely see if we can be a right fit for you. And if we can't, we'll point you in the right direction. So uh, somebody asked about, you know, the, the student ADHD example, was there artificial light that was better for the students than what is currently used? Would adding red light in the classroom assist with student attention? Um, so this uh, study was done in the 70s. Um, they were um, using uh, fluorescent bulbs, from what I remember. Um, but uh, John Ott actually ended up developing a more full spectrum, uh, basically fluorescent bulb. Um, so the wavelengths were more like sunlight. Um, I think he even figured out a way to add a little bit of UVA to it. Um, so uh, I don't believe that they're easily available now, but I did see at one point that the company still sort of exists. Um, but your uh, example of you know, adding a red light um, likely would be beneficial. Um, you, know, you would have to have a spectroscope, a little device that you kind of point at the lights to kind of measure how intense things are because that's kind of the concern about uh, like the computers is that they typically have four times more blue light than they do red light. So, you know, if you see in the office, I always have one of the red light panels on. Um, 
you know, it's not the central bulbs. I'm not doing it for photobomb modulation, just more to kind of uh, use for task lighting and also to balance out some of the artificial light that comes off the screens. Um, you know, the glasses are doing the majority of the filtering to the eyes that uh, likely would help, but it's one of those things that uh, uh, that's a biohacker thing right now. You'd have to try it and see if things improve. Um, they're not going to probably do an actual paid head-to-head -head study anymore on that topic. So, let's see. Let's make sure I haven't missed uh, a question. So, wow, somebody's saying the uh, hardcover version of that book is $800. Um, can't, don't know what to say about that. I, I didn't spend that much on that. Uh, um, the uh, kind of the health and light book um, is, you know, I don't know, maybe it was 20, 30 bucks. But if you're talking about the Rolling Down book book, um, it wasn't $800. I know I paid probably $125, maybe $150 for it. And that's one of those that, like, you definitely, I had to have a paper, or I don't, I have a paperback version for sure, but I'm, you know, marking it up. Um, there's no way I could read that one on a Kindle. I uh, did just so detailed. Uh, so somebody wants me to uh, repeat the comment about cracking your window. Sure. So, uh, so you can probably see kind of reflecting on my side here. There's uh, some uh, windows that I'm usually sitting in front of if I'm at uh, kind of the uh, home office for Apollo Cardiology. Um, so if the windows can open, if you want to crack the windows open a little bit, um, you know, especially if you're driving, uh, crack the windows open a little bit, sunroof open a little bit, even if it's zero degrees outside, the proper wavelengths of light for the day will get through, they'll hit your skin, they'll get in your eyes, they'll reflect off your mirrors, you'll get the certain wavelengths in your eyes that your body needs to know what time of day it is. And somebody's asking, do I help educate providers in the use of PBM devices? Um, not necessarily formally. Um, you know, I've gone through a couple of training courses. Um, you know, I'd highly recommend anybody who's really interested. Uh, Thor uh, gives a great eight hour overview of photobomb modulation, um, but I do uh, informally help uh, educate uh, providers in the St. Louis area. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for the kind words. Just so you can say you've seen it one time for those that uh, didn't uh, see me right at the beginning, this is the last time you'll ever see me wearing these things. So they're really cool at the end of the day, but uh, no more Oakleys for me. Wear your blue rocking glasses, get outside in natural sunlight, and I'll see you guys again next week. Have a good 4th of July. <laughs>